Today on Rappler, a Rappler exclusive, 53 face corruption charges for anomalous multi-million peso irrigation projects. Retired Major General Palparan is moved to a jail in Budahan. And after more than two years, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange will leave the Ecuadorian embassy. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. A Rappler exclusive. At least 53 people face corruption cases for anomalous multi-million peso projects of the National Irrigation Administration, or NIA. Among those charged at the Ombudsman are former NIA Caraga Regional Managers Modesto Membreve, Dexter Patrocino, current Regional Manager Encarnacion Soriano, and construction supplier Gardinel Jimenez. The case involves three NIA-funded projects in Caraga worth 53.6 million pesos or around $1.2 million. In 2012, bids for seven projects were awarded to contractors during Membreve's term. Five were proven to be under the control of Jimenez, although on paper, these were awarded to five different contractors. Cases were filed on three of these projects. On-site inspections of the five projects in April showed, quote, a gross discrepancy between reported progress and the actual status. The projects were supposed to build canals and irrigation works in the province of Agusan del Norte. The Criminal Investigation and Detection Group says the projects should have been finished late 2012 or early 2013, but are not yet finished August 2014. The delay affects more than 240,000 farmers in Caraga. Retired Major General Jovito Palparan is now in a Bulacan jail. A Bulacan court rejects Palparan's plea to remain in the custody of the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, in Manila. Judge Chodora Gonzalez ordered Palparan's immediate transfer. He was brought to the Bulacan jail around 11 a.m. Activists and families of Palparan's alleged victims scream and cry as police escort the former general. Palparan, called the butcher by human rights groups, was arrested August 12 after nearly three years in hiding. He faces charges of kidnapping and serious illegal detention for the 2006 disappearances of student activists Karen Empeño and Cheryl Cadapan. Palparan's counsel, Eduardo Millares, asked the court for leniency, saying his client, quote, risked his life for this country. Between 2005 and 2006, Palparan was the commanding general of the military's 7th Infantry Division based in central Luzon. Activists say he ordered the kidnapping, torture, and murder of leftist activists and militants. Detained Senator Jingoy Estrada wants to deliberate on 12 bills while in custody. Estrada is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development. He made the request to the anti graft court, the Sandigan Bayan. He says this will expedite passage of much-needed laws. Estrada's request has a president. Another court granted Senator Antonio Trillanes request to do his work while in detention for rebellion charges in 2007. Estrada, along with Senators Bong Revilla and Juan Ponce Enrile, is detained for plunder and graft charges for the illegal diversion of public funds to fake organizations controlled by alleged mastermind Janet Napolis. President Benigno Aquino slams China after two Chinese ships were spotted in Reed Bank, also known as Recto Bank. In a TV interview Sunday, Aquino says the Philippine military reported seeing the ships in disputed South China Sea. Reed Bank is 80 nautical miles from Palawan inside the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, or EEZ. A 2013 report by the United States Energy Information Administration said Reed Bank could contain 5.4 billion barrels of oil and 55.1 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Last July, the Philippines extended a British firm's permit to drill oil in Reed Bank. China denounced the move as, quote, illegal and invalid, consistent with its claims to all of the South China Sea. Filipino businessman Manny Pangilinan, who runs British firm Forum Energy, says he's negotiating with the state-run China National Offshore Oil Corporation, or CNOOC, for the joint exploration of Reed Bank. Pangilinan says his only condition was for CNOOC to respect the Philippines' rights over Reed Bank. Aquino said he's willing to jointly develop Recto Bank as long as the Philippine claim is respected. 
The Energy Department, or DOE, says no power plants will be allowed to schedule their maintenance shutdowns during the summer of 2015. The DOE is formalizing an order to prevent shortage and power outages, which could lead to a potential power crisis. Based on projections, the Philippines will face an energy deficit of 200 megawatts in 2015. The DOE adds an additional 400 to 500 megawatts will be needed in March to May 2015. Energy Secretary Jerry Copetilla says some power firms will likely ask to be excluded from the directive. To augment Luzon's power requirements, Petilla proposes contracting additional capacity from power generators. He adds there will be no need to grant emergency powers to the president. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange on Monday says he will soon leave Ecuador's embassy in London, where he's had asylum for more than two years. Assange denies his departure is because of reasons, quote, reported by the Murdoch press. British media reported over the weekend Assange was suffering a life-threatening heart condition, a chronic lung complaint, and dangerously high blood pressure. He says the Ecuadorian embassy will continue to offer Assange protection and help find a solution to a, quote, serious breach of Julian Assange's human rights. WikiLeaks played down Assange's comments, saying he would not depart until there was an agreement with Britain's government. In Liberia, 17 patients infected with Ebola fled after an armed raid on a quarantine center in Monrovia. The raiders claimed the epidemic is fiction. The quarantine unit housed 29 patients who all tested positive for Ebola and were receiving preliminary treatment. A health worker said nine of the 29 died earlier. Three others were taken by force by relatives before the raid. The attackers, mostly young men armed with clubs, shouted, there's no Ebola. Aid workers earlier said denial and ignorance among poorly educated traditional communities helped spread the virus. About 1,500 police and soldiers have been deployed in the worst hit areas of Sierra Leone to prevent raids. The current Ebola outbreak is the worst since the virus first appeared in 1976. It claimed more than 1,000 lives in five months. A shipping container at a British port was discovered Saturday carrying 34 undocumented immigrants and a dead man. Port workers found the frail survivors after hearing banging and screaming from the container at Tilbury Docks east of London. The survivors were taken to nearby hospitals and were treated for hypothermia and dehydration. Police on Sunday said the survivors are Sikhs from Afghanistan and include 13 children. Four people are still in the hospital. The local Sikh community are helping the survivors. Police want to interview the survivors to find out how they got to London. Concerned groups say criminal gangs are behind the trafficking of people in Britain. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon on Monday orders National Guard troops to help restore order in the town of Ferguson. Nixon gave the order hours after police hurled tear gas to disperse violent protesters. Ferguson endured days of violence after a white police officer shot black teen Michael Brown August 9. Police moved into Ferguson Sunday night with armored vehicles to disperse a mob hours before the midnight curfew. The state highway patrol captain said police responded with tear gas after the mob threw Molotov cocktails, calling it disobedience, pre-planned aggression. <clears throat> Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 8, more than 130,000 mourners attended the funeral of Brazilian presidential candidate Eduardo Campos Sunday. Campos died in a plane crash on August 13th. He was 49. Campos was a popular governor of Pernambuco State and had been running third in opinion polls for the October election. <clears throat> and at number 9, Young Scots aged 16 and 17 are getting the vote for the first time in Scotland's independence referendum. Both pro-independence and pro-union sides ran campaigns on social media to get as many young people involved as possible. Opinion polls suggest the youth are not keen on Scotland's independence from Britain. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. The world's most pierced man is barred from Dubai. A local newspaper on Sunday reported Rolf Buchholz was turned back at the airport on his way to a hotel. 
Airport officials gave no reason for refusing Bukhol's entry and put him on a flight to Istanbul. Bukhol is recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records in 2012 as the world's most pierced man. A spokesman for the hotel where Buchholz was scheduled to appear says its management failed to get permission for the 53-year-old German to enter the emirate. Buchholz vows to never return to Dubai. He posts on Twitter, at the end, I got an answer why I can't enter Dubai. The immigration thought, I'm black magic. <clears throat> Sorry. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of clicks on their mood meter. If we take a look today, uh, you see Jesse Robredo. If I were president, interestingly, 11% sad, 84% inspired um, politics. Aquino hits China over ships in Recto Bank, part of the top story today. 14% happy, 65% angry. That red mirrored in the story that's gotten the most number of votes in the last 24 hours. President Aquino says he's open to a second term. 34% happy, 58% angry. That red bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, August 18, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.